Hi guys and welcome to today's video on a year nine topic. Tick, we're loving this. Summarizing data, measures of center. Now, if you think it should be data, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm in Australia at the moment and they say things weird here. Don't even start me off on what a thong is over here. Yes, it goes on the feet. Very bizarre, very weird story about that that I'll go. Now, if you are new to my channel, hi guys, I'm Darren Mascuri. Really, really good to see you. It is my job to make you understand maths, and I hated maths at school. Hopefully that's made me able to explain this stuff in terms of all sorts of random stuff. So I've got bits of videos, I've got Disney, I've got Spice Girls, it's all sort of random stuff. If you are new, do me a favor, there's an arrow over there that I would be deeply, deeply grateful. If you would click and just show your support. It's very lonely sitting in this room, I'm a very small person trying to do quite a large job here and recording all these videos from year seven all the way through to year 12 for all sorts of different countries. So greatly appreciate if you can do that and if you can tell your friends. While you're at it, can you click like uh, below and uh, send some love out for me as well. Now, what are we dealing with today? Well, this is actually a recap lesson for the work that we've been dealing with previously. It's about finding the mean, the median mode and range of sets of data and actually being able to reverse the process to be able to find the mean when they actually change our conditions. I'll explain a bit more about that in just a moment. But as a recap, we've spent a lot of time looking at data in both the year seven section and year eight sections of these videos. We've looked at how to draw bar charts and pie charts and line graphs and stem and leaf plots and dot plots and histograms, which has helped us express all of the different data out there, the, the categorical and the numerical data that we've been dealing with. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a whole range of videos that you can go and watch either on this YouTube channel or mathsguru.com. There are also notes you can download and stick into your books. My goodness, could I be any more helpful? What we're going to deal with today is actually we're going to adjust it with working with the mean, the median, and the mode, not the range. In a previous video, we actually said that data can be expressed in terms of two main things. We talk about center and we talk about spread. Now, when I say spread, I'm talking about veggie, my, and marmite, and jam spread, and marmalade. No, I'm not. I'm actually not. I'm looking at how far the data spreads out. And so we tend to say, as I say here, we can think of data in terms of some sort of center and some sort of spread. Now, we're gonna ignore spread for the moment and just look at the measures of center. Now, those measures of center, you need to now remember as the mean, the median, and the mode. And just for reference, we realize that the range and the interquartile range is the measure of spread, but we're not interested in that. So before we go on any further to probably the main part of this lesson, let's just recap what it means to find the mode, the median, and the mean. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Now, all of my examples are extracted from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, and Cambridge have so kindly allowed me to use all of their examples in these videos. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. And so, let's look at this first one here. We'll start with the easiest one, the mode. And if we remember, what does mode mean? Yes, I put it here. The most common data item. All right, so it's the one that appears the most. Now, when we're doing the mode, we don't really have to put things in order, but I'm a bit of an old stick in the mud now, and I want to put things in order. So I've got one, I've got two, I've got two. What else have I got? I've got a four, a five, a six, and a six. A four, five, six, six, nine, and 10. And so we're looking for the most common data item, the one that there's most of. And wow, first question, and they're already trying to trick me. Because what do you notice? I've got two twos. Two two. <laughs> that funny thing they wear for the ballet. Whole new discussion. And two sixes. So before we go any further, not only does this have a mode, in fact, it has two modes. So for this question here, the mode actually would be written as two and six. And if I was going to describe this data, I would call it by modal. Why would I call it bimodal? Bi for two and modal meaning two modes. Well, that was fairly simple. Put them in order, find out which one has the most. Now, obviously, if it had three modes, it wouldn't make any sense. And it's highly unlikely that in any of the questions you're going to get, you would have three modes. Median. Now, in the most amazing movie called Ghost, uh, Whoopi uh, Goldberg played a fake psychic who actually ends up being able to hear a real ghost, otherwise played by Patrick Swayze. A little bit of it is playing behind me, and it is an amazingly funny and awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, it's great. I won't give you any spoilers, but funny as. Demi Moore, Patrick Swayze, awesome. You want to watch it. But anyway, 
A medium is actually someone who sits between the living and the not so living and theoretically can pass messages between the two. I like to think of medium as when I go to, oh, uh, median, that when I go to the uh, supermarket to buy clothes, I buy a medium, which is the one in the middle. So median is the one in the middle. And so once again, here is my data items that I had a moment ago. Let's put them in order because to find the middle one, you have to put them in order. So what do we have? One, two, two, four, five, six, six. So one, two, two, four, five, six, six, nine, and 10. How do we put them in the middle? Uh, how do we find the middle one? We cross one, two off the end, one, two off the end, one off the end, one off the end, one off the end, one off the end. And lo and behold, we have the medium is equal to five. Now again, remember that we're trying to find some sort of measure of center. Now obviously you couldn't get more central than the median, right? So this here is a great measure of center, one of those center numbers. Another one is the mean, actually, believe it or not. And so the mean is great. It's a mathematical measure of center that requires a little bit more, a little bit more massy stuff. Now, how do we find the mean? Well, I'm sure you remember. Add all the numbers together and divide by how many numbers there are. So again, in this situation, if I wanted to find the mean, I would have one plus two plus two plus four plus five plus six plus six plus nine plus 10 and divide all of that by how many numbers there were. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers, and there are nine numbers. Now, I don't have my calculator connected to this screen at this moment in time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work this out on my calculator and then come back in just a moment. So one plus two plus two plus four plus five plus six plus six plus nine plus plus 10 equals 45. So all I've done is add that top bit together and now I'm going to divide it by 9 and 45 divided by 9 is, I know you're all shouting this at me going, why do you need a calculator? And once again, it's 5. So we have another measure of center that is 5. Yay! So the great thing is there that the mean and the median seem to agree. They're roughly saying that our center value is 5. Now, before I go to the end of this video, and the bit that tends to confuse everyone, but not you guys, because you've got this, is that remember, when you work out the mean, you add all the numbers you've got and divide by how many numbers there are. Very, very important. And so, comparing the mean, median, and mode, because sometimes in a question, you might be asked to compare this stuff, to actually turn around and say, well, what do you notice about the values of the mean, the median, and the mode? Well, in this situation here, because we're looking for a measure of center, yes, the mean, which we know is a mathematical center, and the median, also the middle value, would suggest that our measure of center is approximately five, yes? We would be happy saying that our graph, if we were to draw a sort of curvy thing, would have five in that center. What does the mode tell me? Well, believe it or not, not a lot. Probably the least useful of all of the things we measure in maths, okay? The mode's really for sort of younger kids go, oh, I can find the most. Yeah, but the mean and the median are the ones that are most important. Now, ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because this is where life gets interesting. We are going to do it all backwards. Now, Barry, 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 hashtag no more Barry, is very, very good at trying to throw curveballs. He's very good at trying to trick us. Now, as maths teachers, we teach you lots of stuff going forwards. We're not so good at teaching you how to do things backwards because we hope that you'll be able to work it out. We hope that you understand the maths enough to be able to do it backwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an example here of how to do this backwards. And you're gonna say, well, uh, what do you mean? Right, and the hours a shop assistant spends cleaning a store in eight successive weeks, successive weeks are, blah, 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 try that one again, ouch, is eight, nine, 12, 10, 10, eight, five, and 10. The first part of the question says, calculate the mean for that set of data. So mean, remember, is the average. How do we work out the mean? We go mean is equal to add them all together. Now, because I'm not working out the median or the mode or any of that type of stuff, I can actually leave them as they are. I don't have to worry about putting them in order. Eight plus nine plus 12 plus 10 plus 10 plus eight plus five plus 10. And we're gonna divide that by 
Well, they gave us in the question that there were eight pieces of data. Once again, loading up my calculator, eight plus nine plus 12 plus 10 plus 10 plus eight plus five plus 10 gives me 72. We're gonna divide that by eight and that's going to give me the grand total of nine. So for those eight data items, we have a mean of nine. Tick, thank you very much. There is some marks in an exam. And this is where they throw the curveball. How many hours would the shop assistant need to clean in the ninth week? Okay, hold on a moment. Extra week. Ninth week for the mean to equal 10. So what they're now saying is, all right, we're gonna give you the mean. You're not gonna work it out. We're gonna give you the mean, but we want you to tell me what value would I need to add to make the mean 10. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, and I don't always have to do it this way, but we remember that we've got now nine weeks. We don't know what value, we don't know what this extra value is, how many hours this person has worked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a comma, and when they don't know something in maths, I'm gonna give it a letter. In this case, we'll just call it X. So now, we know that our mean is eight plus nine plus 12 plus 10 plus eight plus five plus 10 plus x. We don't know what the value is, but we're hoping we'll be able to find this out. And what am I gonna divide it by? Not eight, nine. Remember, we've now got an extra data item. So we're gonna divide it by nine. But the thing is, uh, oh, hold on a moment. We can add all those together. We know what eight plus nine plus 12 plus 10 plus eight plus five plus 10 is, because we've already done it here. So I now know that my mean is equal to 72 plus x, all divided by nine. But I've got two unknowns. There's two things I don't know. Well, actually, yes, there is. Remember the question told me that actually the mean is 10. So when I see the mean, I'm gonna write 10 is equal to 72 plus X divided by 19. Now the next part really base is really dependent on how good your algebra skills are. Hopefully by about year nine, you're pretty good at undoing divide bys and times bys. Now, because I've got to divide by nine here, how do I get rid of it? I times everything by nine. So I'm gonna multiply this side by nine and I'm gonna multiply that side by nine. Well, multiplying by nine, these two cancel out, which leaves me 72 plus X and nine times 10 gives me 90. And ladies and gentlemen, what do I do to both sides now to get X on its own? I take away the 72. So I'm gonna subtract 72 from both sides, which gives me X on its own and 90 minus 72 is 18. And ladies and gentlemen, what we've just found is that to make my mean after nine weeks equal to 10, that this missing data item here, this missing value of X would need to be 18. So this is where we are trying to test, do you understand something forwards? And then we throw a curveball by doing it backwards. The trick to doing these type of questions is this. All right, and these are what I think the important things to know, is when you are given a new mean, it means that you've been given a new data item, which you can put as X, and you have to add one to the total number of numbers. Yep, so whereas we had eight data items before, we then went to nine. You have to choose a pronumeral that stands for any, it doesn't matter what letter you chose. So when you go back up here, what letter did I choose? Well, I said, well, let's just choose X. Doesn't matter, you can use A, B, C, D. The important thing is, is to write your calculation out again using that new letter and that new divide. Now, if you don't understand how to do the algebra, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna have to practice because it becomes really, really important. Well, again, this lesson, remember, was a recap about measures of center, which is the mean, the median, and the mode, not the range, just the mean, median, and mode. I've shown you how to work out the mean, median, mode, which you're gonna need to do, and I've shown you how to do this backwards. Always a good idea to practice, practice, and practice. You'll make mistakes, that's fine. But obviously at some point you'll go, I'm getting this. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. This is the end of another Mass Guru production. If you haven't already done so in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe by clicking that circling thing over there. Greatly appreciated if you do. And if you could give a shout out to all of your mates to get them to subscribe as well would be greatly appreciated. If not, there is a video loading below that is of this same sort of year nine standard. It's awesome to see you. Thank you so much for dropping by. Keep well, Mass Guru. See you again next time. Out.